High Point Market is one of the biggest events in the interior design industry, and at Pearl Collective, we make an effort to attend every spring and fall. In this episode of the Creative Genius Podcast, Gail Doby talks with Tammy Nagam, CEO of High Point Market Authority. Learn how this citywide event is pulled off and get a behind the scenes look at how the guest experience is created and how High Point Market creates a crucial opportunity to connect designers and vendors. Tammy, I am excited to talk to you today. This will be so much fun. And those of you that don't know Tammy, she is the CEO of High Point Market Authority. And um, I see her around campus, so to speak. I've (laughs) known you for a number of years. And I just really appreciate what you do for our industry. And I thought it would be interesting for you to share about that. But first, tell us, how in the world did you end up getting into Uh, what you're doing now? How did you get here? I mean, Gail, it is um, it is a path that I guess was a very unpredictable path. Um, I actually uh, started my career in youth serving nonprofits. I have a master's degree in counseling of all the things um, and worked there for about seven years and just felt like there was more out there um, that I uh you know, needed to explore. And I grew up in a furniture family. My dad worked for Bassett Furniture for 36 years. And so I always say I have, I do have sawdust in my veins. I grew up in Henry County, Virginia. And so, you know, everyone I knew worked in furniture. Um, And so was given an opportunity uh, to uh, work for uh, a previous mayor who uh, was at the time the president of the Market Authority, and she was starting this organization and said, look, I need somebody who can keep balls in the air. And we had worked together on some projects with some civic groups in town. And um, she said, I don't really know much about this, but I think you might be great at it. So uh, why don't you come and work with me? So 22 years ago, I made that leap out of um, the nonprofit world uh, into uh, kind of furniture where I felt very much at home. And um, needless to say, I think when the market bug bites you, uh, lots of folks, um, I feel like, get into this industry and into this um, event and uh, stay for a long time. So I'm, I'm definitely one of those. Well, it's really great to see you. You've gone through a couple of different roles with the organization. Yeah. And now you're the the head honcho. Yeah. 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 I started out as director of operations and then was promoted to chief operating officer um, and spent um, uh, 11 years uh, as COO. And then, um, you know, when uh, our current president decided it was time to retire. Um, had some conversations with our board and and interviewed for the role and was very excited to be offered this job. I think after sitting at number two for so many years, you recognize um, the importance of of this organization and leading this organization. And so it's um, something I take very seriously every day. Mm. How different is your role from COO to CEO? (laughs) You know, it's funny because I think that was my biggest fear was that I was going to get this promotion and they were going to sit me down in this chair and they were going to say, okay, now you're going to do this job and the job you had before. Um, But I've worked, I've kind of restructured the team and worked um, hard to make sure that I, that I was able to get, um, kind of a, a higher uh, viewpoint and and work at a different level. And so um, while uh, I remember the days of doing uh, brochure delivery and, uh, you know, all those things, um, I do, I am able to lean into the parts of this that I really love, which is the more of the strategic thinking, the the fundraising at the state level, the being involved in our community to ensure that, you know, High Point is, um, uh, you know, that we're all pulling in the same direction for this event. So um, it is very different. And uh, I think that's by design. 
Well, it's fun to run things. And I think yes. thinking is a fun thing, especially if yeah. you have those natural talents. And it seems like you do. Yeah. So um, I think it's going to be interesting to see, too, how you apply that knowledge that you have and the skills and all of that background to changing what High Point Market is doing. And I'm sure we'll mm-hmm. see some changes under your leadership. And not to say anything in the past was not good. It was always great. Mm-hmm. I just think everyone has a chance to put their own stamp on it. So that's really exciting. Yeah, I've spent a lot of time really um, working on that, the guest experience side of what we do. And I think at the core of what the market authority um, uh, is charged with is, is, not only the marketing and the and the making sure we have the right people coming to market, but you learn pretty quickly. And I think I learned early in this job that we can recruit new buyers, new designers to come to High Point all day long if we are not retaining those folks and they aren't finding this to be um, uh, something that's good for their business and and something that they they feel connected to and that they need to come back every six months all the recruiting in the world um, is not going to help if we're not able to really keep people coming back. And so that is um, where I cut my teeth, I would say, in this organization. And so I think as you see things unfold, you're going to see that at the at the heart of what we're doing. That is such a great idea. I think that's one thing that is becoming top of mind for a lot of companies today mm-hmm. is client experience in all mm-hmm. aspects. And that's true for designers too. They need to think about that for their clients. That right. That is the the de- definition and the difference that they can bring to whatever they're doing. It's interesting. We spend a lot of time in journey mapping um, on our team. Is really looking at that designer experience from the point that they read something or hear about High Point or a colleague tells them about it or they're on social media. What does that journey look like from the minute they are piqued by the interest until they're going home after they're leaving High Point? So through that whole life cycle and all the touch points that we have to make a difference in that process and ensuring when they sit back down at their desk, they say, you know what? I'm a better designer. I'm a better business person. It was worth my time and my money. And I'm going to go ahead and register for the next market. Um, We feel like Um, those are important things and and a place where we need to spend time working. It's it's interesting. I've been, when I was a designer, I never came to High Point. And the first time I came to High Point was in this industry, in this business. And it was somewhere around 11 or 12 years ago. And I've been coming to market twice a year ever since then. Mm -hmm. And it took me a long time to figure out what is the purpose for me being there And I think that's an interesting one, too. And I'm going to put this in your hopper is to think about those of us who are essentially, I think of myself as a partner to High Point, because we bring a lot of our clients there. We set up meetings there. And so we also have a journey as well. So Mm -hmm. I'll give you that for food for thought. Absolutely. And it, and that, um, while I would say we certainly focus on the retailer and the designer, we also talk about um, the exhibitors and the reps and, um, and people like yourself, those who come here because you are part of this industry and contributing in a different way. Um, because we, we want every, it, you know, that one of the best parts about market is that the whole industry is here. Mm-hmm. It's not just one seg- segment. And so um, all of that is very important to us. And, um, and we consider those, um, we, we consider all those uh, past types for us is what we talk about. Okay. Um, all of those folks uh, when they're coming to high point. That's so good. Yeah. Uh, I, in fact, I was having a conversation with Ashley Grigg and mm-hmm. Ashley is in charge of partnerships. I don't mm-hmm. remember her exact title right yes. now. Yes, And I we were chatting right. about yeah. the passes because she's in the, <laughs> in the throes of getting a new pass system set up. Yes. Thinking, yes. Oh my gosh. What a big job that is. You've got 75,000 people that yes. are on your list that could be attending a market. So yes. that's a major change. I think, you know, the 
the back end of things are are the the parts again for my operational background because I've I've had Ash, I've done Ashley's job um, and uh, just the data side and the process side. People feel like getting a pass in the mail is just kind of getting a pass in the mail. There is so much that goes into that uh, that passion colored envelope, as we call it, arriving on your desk with your passes in it. Um, there is so much that goes into that. And um, and uh, one would argue it's one of the most important parts of what we do, because without that piece, um, you know, Ashley's job sort of we've we have three vice presidents um, marketing and communication. It's Ben Muller and then Ashley strategic growth and partnerships and Terry Venable, who's operations and finance actually kind of sits in the center because what she does feeds both sides. And so the other two have no purpose if her part doesn't work. <laughs> so, you know, that, the, that centerpiece with, um, is really mining out, uh, who comes here, the data behind it, the processes by which you get here um, is very important. And we're uh, very excited about having uh, a new vendor. But anytime you do that, uh, we've been with the same folks since 2009. because this is a major change for us, Gail. Uh, again, it looks like just a pass. But um, uh, we hope everyone gives us a little bit of grace for October as we are, are uh, stretching our legs with some new folks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just wanted to bring that up because I think you all are unsung heroes. You're quietly behind the scenes, setting up everything to make this an experience that helps the industry. And this impacts the whole state of um, North Carolina. Right. By yeah. Two billion plus. I think it uh, is six point seven billion dollars oh, a year. That's, yeah. That's a lot of money. Yes. And it's the heart of the furniture industry. So for those that have not been to market, it's an experience and there are what, 2000 showrooms and yes. well, one and a half million square feet, I believe are the stats. Yes. Are. Yes. You got that. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> <laughs> I often get those details wrong, but I, right. think they're important I, you know, I um, say all the time, I'm measurement challenged. Unlike you all who are in the design business, that's never an issue, but it's 201 football fields of home furnished, fabulous home furnishing. So, I mean, for me, 11 and a half million square feet sounds like something I can't really wrap my arms around, but 201 football fields, my feet feel it already. <laughs> exactly. So remember to wear your very comfy shoes. That's right. And as our friend Chris Barber says, bring a different shoe or pair of shoes for every day. Every day. That's right. That is the trick. You have to change. You cannot wear the same pair two days in a row. And um, our motto is we look good from the ankles up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh. Gosh, I didn't know this. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. When I see yeah, you. We, that's it. I mean, I can't be responsible for because you know when your feet hurt, everything's wrong. I just okay. feel like my feet have to feel okay. Yeah, but don't wear your Jimmy Choo's orange stilettos. It's no. absolutely not the right pair of shoes for market. No, right. <laughs> I keep see those for dinner. Oh yeah, maybe yeah, for dinner. Yeah, keep those for dinner. Right, but not the cocktail party. No. <laughs> Well, let's talk about some of the changes you've seen happen. 22 years is quite a while in the industry. It is. It is. Generations in terms of what has happened. So what have you seen change over this course of time? You know, Gail, when you mentioned this question, um, I started just sort of making myself a list of all the the major things that have happened um, since I've been here. Um, my first market was the first market after 9-11. Oh my gosh. And so um the 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 security plans, the um you know, all the things that we put in place to be able to make sure this international event was a safe place for you all to come. Um you know, there've been offshoring and anti-dumping and a major recession and uh House Bill 2 in North Carolina, which, uh, you know, uh, really changed a lot of people's perception about our state and not not for the good. Um, COVID and 
most recently tip over. And I mean, really in the last 20 years, there have been some major uh, both world events as well as industry um, issues that have really shaped, I feel like, home furnishings as we see it today. Um, And our organization has, we're sort of like that willow tree that bends and moves through the storms, um, but remains steadfast in making sure that we are here to connect the buyer and the seller. And while uh, we may need to pivot and we it it may mean that that processes or operations change temporarily to be able to to make sure we're handling things at the end of the day, staying very focused on connecting that buyer and seller in a meaningful way um, really hasn't changed in all those years. The buyer and seller has changed, um, but the 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 need for that has not. Mm. Well, specifically, since one of the major things that that we all experienced worldwide, um, COVID, how has that changed the industry? You know, um, COVID was, first of all, we canceled a market for only the second time in a hundred plus years. Um, the only other time market had been canceled was during World War II when they took IHFC and turned it into the records division for the Army. I mean, this was unprecedented. And so COVID happens and the consumer world wakes up to our industry and buys furniture like they haven't in so many years. So we had this major need for a market. So we immediately go to Raleigh and start talking to the governor's office about how can we have a market? How can we do this? And so uh, we only missed one. Uh, we had a market in October of 2020. We did 3,000 temperature checks a day. And uh, you might remember expanded market over nine days, and there were three three-day periods. And so as a show, as an event, um, I would say it it really, sh- I think, uh, exemplified the resilience of of our city to make sure we were able to have a market. Um, the other thing was this um, realization that this industry is one who, A, likes to come together, and we missed each other. You saw that afterwards. And this product is something that is best experienced in person. You need to sit on it. You need to feel the fabric. You need to hear the story from the person who designed that. Um, And so I feel like while we maybe all got uh, a little more comfortable with technology, uh, we're used to seeing a showroom tour now virtually. um, At the end of the day, I think home furnishings is still something that um, we see the need for a market because, because we want to we want to buy by being with the people who made it, designed it, and at the end of the day, um, hear the story behind it so that you all as designers can communicate that to your client. And mm-hmm. that's best done here in High Point. Mm-hmm. It's so true. And I just think about how different the world would be if we didn't have that opportunity to actually yeah. see things. I know we have, you know, even Amazon is dabbling in parts of the design industry and it seems like every celebrity is getting into some aspect of it as well and in the end you you're right it is it's about relationships yes the relationships are critical I just think about uh, for me to ever even think about retirement I don't even know if I can because I I can't leave the industry because I really enjoy the relationships that I have so Absolutely. It's, um, you know, coming back together and even after COVID, I feel like this was so amplified is that um, we missed people like we missed, you know, our team did these videos that we sent out to you all. I feel like we were sitting here in this empty city, like, (laughs) please come back. Like we missed those relationships. You're absolutely right. And um And this industry is still, um, and again, I, you know, uh, go back to 
having sort of grown up in this is that I feel like that's the piece that really has remained strong is that, is that we, um, at the end of the day, want to learn from each other. We love the networking piece. We, um, you know, want to be able to communicate to our client the great thing about this product. And, and I see designers get so excited about telling the stories that they've heard while in High Point. Um, and, and that's kind of what it's, it's built on. Yeah, it's a, a frame with some eight-way hand tying. But at the end of the day, it's really built on the relationship. My dad used to say all the time that furniture was put together with cuss words and wood glue. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I love these backstories. They're the yeah. <laughs> well, where do you see the industry going today? And what are some of the challenges that you see ahead? Um, you know, I think we we all are concerned about what about retail today and, and what that looks like. Um, that mid-tier retailer, um, you know, in many cases, family-owned businesses. Uh, in many cases, maybe a second generation that's not necessarily excited about taking the reins. Um, and and so I think um, buying and selling furniture looks different today than, than it has. Um, and you think about the next generation, how they will purchase furniture. Certainly um, online is a big part of that, but also this sort of experiential ho- whole home um, you're, it's just, um, someone said to me the other day, if you've met one designer, you've met one designer. Like it's so different how you all run your businesses and, and what that means for the buying trend. How, you know, is that a, is that a, um, an interior designer who has a studio or maybe has a retail store or maybe, um, you know, is working around her kitchen table. It's, it's, they're all over the map. Um, and then you couple that with, um, you know, product that, um, we're not buying heirlooms as much anymore. We're not passing down product. So I feel like we're in this state of change that we're all sort of looking to, um, where does this land and where is that, um, where is that middle ground of how things will be, um, bought and sold. And I, I think it's not only furniture, I think it's consumer goods in general, but, um, furniture tends to have had this long history that it, it pretty much worked the same for so many years. And now we are seeing a lot of change, not only post COVID, but just with, um, a new generation coming along and, and, uh, looking at, at different ways, you know, what does AI, how is AI going to impact that? And, um, so I, I do feel like we're, we're sort of at this pivotal point of, of what it looks like tomorrow. If I had the answer to that, Gail, I would be a rich woman, but, um, I, I think we're all sort of, um, looking at that in our own businesses. Mm-hmm. How do you see High Point Market Authority's role uh, affecting and evolving to to meet these changes? I think at the core of what we do is, is that piece of making your business better. Um, mm-hmm. And that is for anyone who comes here. Certainly uh, the buyer, when you know, and that for us is designers, retailers, architects, specifiers, all those folks. Um, And so whatever that means, we have got to be diligent about providing the tools that it takes to do that um, and really uh, doing that in a very efficient way, in a very productive way, um, and, and working with our exhibitors also to make sure that they understand what the customers need. Um, and, uh, you know, th- those decision making processes are so important. I-, I still stand by when someone goes back to their desk, they have to say coming to High Point was worth my time and effort. And um, so all those changes are going to impact what what we're looking at, you know, things like um, we're spending a lot of dollars on our app right now. 
Um, and that has um, changed drastically in the past 10 years. Um, but, you know, what do you need on the ground to navigate 13 blocks of home furnishings um, Disneyland? Um, and so looking at what those things are, whether it's being able to very quickly tell when's that next bus coming or um, who's designer friendly or uh, if you uh, liked this product, um, maybe these education sessions are something you should look at. But really um, giving, serving up that information when you need it and the way you want it. And that's what we're working hard on. Mm, that's great. Well, speaking of, you're talking about designer friendly. And it's not been that many years since designers were welcome to market. Yeah. It's, it's been in the time that I've been attending market. So yeah. um, how did this openness come about and how do you see that evolving in the future? Yeah, I'll tell you, early in my career, I took those calls from designers who were upset because um, they were turned away at the door or that um, manufacturers just weren't prepared to sell to them. Um and boy, have we seen that shift happen. Um, we have seen our exhibitors um, really understand the kind of buying power that designers bring. And I think at the end of the day, that's what really flipped the switch was consumers are understanding the value that a designer brings. And it's now not only just for the wealthy. Now, uh, you know, designers are are uh, utilized, it, it all feels so much more attainable to us these days than maybe it did 20 years ago. Um, and I think, um, yeah, you know, things like HGTV has made us realize how much better that can look <laughs> if you get someone who knows what they're doing. Um, and so as a result of that, the manufacturers have had to um, really make a plan for how they sell to the design trade. And we watched this sort of happen over time. Um, and, uh, you know, we have a, a, a filter on our website that is designer friendly. And so uh, watching uh, there for a while, manufacturers would be choosing that, but really not have a program for you. They just wanted to make sure you came in. Um, but we are seeing them certainly uh, look now at, at this sector as an important part of their business and embrace it. They are designing product for you. They are uh, designing processes so that it meets your needs in terms of how you sell as a non-stocking um, customer. Um, and so uh, we are definitely seeing that change even so much many of these exhibitors doing education in their showrooms that are continuing education credits for the design trade um, and really uh, embracing what that designer brings. It has changed the face of this market for the better. Um, it doesn't mean we don't love our retailers and, and want to make sure that, that um, they are still getting what they need out of market, but it has certainly meant um, uh, for the event itself, it has uh, changed the face of what we're doing. And I think the manufacturers have followed suit to make sure that they're getting your business as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I would say that even our relationship with the vendors over the course of the years has changed quite a bit. Mm -hmm. we, we do go to the showrooms and give educational events because yeah. for us, it's the way to give back, it's a way to connect with our community yeah. and to keep our networking fresh and keep that personal connection. So Absolutely. it's really important for all of us that are in my side of the industry mm -hmm. to be there and be a part of it. So um, thank you for giving us that opportunity to, to do more. Absolutely. I, I um, you know, it's uh, it, as we go through those processes, it's interesting. Our team kind of, um, reaching out to designers that that uh, we know attend high point and passing things by them. And sometimes we're right on and sometimes we're not. And so, um, you know, those kinds of things really make a difference in um, knowing that that we've made plans uh, to produce an event that works the way you want to work. It's very important to us. Sure. 
So good. Well, let's talk about the reason why interior designers should be coming to market. What do they get out of that experience? Um, you know, you're going to, I would say that's a, we call it the three-legged stool, Gail. Um, one is product. You Number one is product. You're going to find everything in high point. You're going to find all the price points. You're going to find um, uh, categories of furniture that, that you can't find anywhere else. Um, we encourage designers to uh, make a plan before they come here so they are efficient. But I also, also insist that they leave some time for discovery. Because a lot of times you stumble upon things here because we are, you know, uh, across an entire downtown, you find things here that that you maybe would not have had exposure to any other way. And so having uh, resources to pass on to your clients um, is important. And it sets the, the designers who come to High Point, we would like to think are set apart from their competition who don't attend for that reason. So um, those products, and again, I've talked about the stories behind it. I still think that's very important is um, getting to see the product and interact with it on more of an intimate level. The second is the education. I feel like we um, and the exhibitors here put a lot of work into making sure that um, it's uh, it's worth your time to be here and that uh, you can check a couple boxes when you come to High Point. You can find that product, but you can also, um, if your state is one that requires those continuing education credits, that you can um, check some of those off while you're in High Point. And the third, you mentioned it a minute ago, Gail, is the networking. Mm -hmm. um, you know, having conversation with folks, one of my favorite things to do is to take my name tag off and ride the bus and listen to the conversations. And I love when two designers connect and they have a lot in common and they begin sort of, and they're, they're in two different parts of the country. So there's no competition. And uh, two markets ago, I sat down on the bus, took the name tag off and rode for a little while. And these two ladies sat and talked. And at one point, you know, we have, hosts and hostesses on the buses who call out the stops and those kinds of things. The hostess stopped and stopped and said, I just want to make sure what stop number are you getting off on? Because do you realize you've just ridden the whole loop? <laughs> and they both had just started talking to the point that they forgot to get off the bus. But you can't recreate that in other places. That was worth their time doing. Even Their feet probably feel a little better, but they also connected um, in a way that you hear those stories all the time. Um, you know, I hear designers talk about that this is this is like an extended family and that they've met people that during the year they'll pick up the phone and say, hey, I'm having trouble with this. What did you do? If you have you had this problem? Um, so that networking piece is as important, I think, as the product and the education is that you're able to sort of build that um, network of people that um, can be there to, to help you as you um, build your business. Mm, that's so great. Yeah. Well, you mentioned this a few minutes ago, and I was not aware of this on the app. So this is new for me, and I'm glad to know yeah. this, that the showrooms uh, that are friendly to the trade, that you have that showing up on we the do. app. I we do. Great. There are two. There's um, a designer friendly and a container only. And so you can actually sort, you know, uh, to make sure you're maybe filtering out. If you're not buying container, then you can sort those out um, and you can sort by those manufacturers who have gone in and self-selected. They are designer friendly. And so, um, you know, we hope and I will tell you that list has gotten a lot longer over the years. When I first put designer friendly there, it was because I didn't want you turned away. I wanted designers to be able to to see that list of where they were going to be able to to actually buy um, and not just kind of spin their wheels. Um, and these days, that list is a lot longer and probably um, less filtering, so to speak, on that one. But, um, you know, you can go in and choose your products that you're looking for and then hit that designer-friendly um, filter 
And it actually gives you a plan uh, by building and by bus stop. Wow. Completely planned out for you. Love that. Yeah, you can add your events to it, all those things. So, and it moves between the desktop and the app. Um, my best advice is to start on the desktop because it's a lot, you know, you can see the photos, you can, um, you can really experience it more in that larger format, but then it's the same login on the app. So if you start your planning on the desktop, you then log in when you download the app and your plan moves with you. Great. And so, um, then you have it on your phone for when you're on site. Well, you've already listed a couple of advantages now. Yeah. (laughs) If a designer is new to market, Mm -hmm. my next question was, what are five things they should know before they come? And it sounds like, for sure, go look at the um, app and look at it on your desktop and then look at it on your mobile, set up your Exactly. Bring five, Uh, whatever number pair of shoes of days. (laughs) That's right. What else would you say? So I would encourage you to register early. Because we're going to qualify you that first time that you register, get some documents from you and um, get you set up in our system. Once you're registered, you then receive um, emails from us that help you prepare. They actually walk you through based on the weeks out. So it's going to tell you, now it's time to book your flights. Here's where you need to get your hotel room. Here's a link to the app. So you start planning. Here's And so we walk you through that weekly. You get an email that helps you prepare, but you have to register first because if you haven't registered, we're sending you things to try to get you registered. Once you register, you go into another bucket of emails that actually change um, and uh, are not as promotional, but more planning. So uh, registering early is good. Um, the second is to, when you do book that hotel room, is to use our concierge service. It is absolutely free. You can do it online or with a phone call. I would encourage you the first time you do it to make the call. Uh, we work with a company called Travel Quest. They have a team of people who are very educated about market and about high point. And getting a good fit for that hotel, whatever is important to you, we run shuttles to 91 hotels. So we'll find a place that's good for you. If you go to one of the search engines that you might just Google, like an Expedia or Travelocity, um, you're going to see rooms are blacked out. So what we get from first timers is they call and they say, oh, I can't get a room. There's nothing available. They are available. It's just they've taken them out of those systems. And so use what's there for you. Use that that concierge and make sure you get a good fit because getting in a good hotel that first time is going to be important. Um, The other thing I would say is to sign up for a tour. We have lots of veterans. Gail, you know all about these folks who do fantastic tours. And there are all kinds of ways you can do these. Uh, Insiders, which is for new folks, or uh, there's Hotspot, which is more product-based. So, But the important thing is early on in your trip here, sign up for a half-day tour. It will be worth your time to hear from a market expert how they work this show. Um, Pick up some good tips. And um, I think you will find that that first time is uh, you feel like you've accomplished something uh, because you've been able to to sort of hear from a veteran how they do it. Um, and the last thing I would say, and I said this before, but I really uh, feel strongly about this, is to um, leave that time for discovery. Mm. Don't schedule yourself. Um, you know, we, we talk about the importance of planning. That is very important. But leave a little bit of time to say, you know what? I am going to go to the Hamilton Wren District and I'm just going to walk the streets. Or I'm going to get on the downtown showroom shuttle and I'm going to ride the green line and see what's there and hop off. As I see things that I, you know, you pass Theodore Alexander. Ah, oh, I didn't know they were here. So you hop off and and um, maybe go to some places that you're unfamiliar with or that you you um, weren't aware. Maybe had a showroom here. Those kinds of things. That I think are the things that end up moving the needle for your business because you've been able to find something a little unexpected. Mm, that's so great. 
Well, I think we did a pretty good job there between the two yeah. of us. Talking <laughs> we did. We did. Our favorite things. That we That's right. With people. And I'll share one more idea, which is uh, we learned, we kind of found a rhythm for ourselves. We quit doing um, hotels and we rent okay. houses. And I know you yes. have houses to rent on the website as well. We do. And we do that because we bring a team. And if you're bringing a team, bring or think about a house instead and then the other thing that we found that was really helpful for us is we found a car service and yeah. we don't rent a car because it's hard to go find a place to park. And if you have things yeah. to carry with you, then you have to deal with that. So for us, we just have somebody that drops us off and picks us up and it really makes it a lot easier. Absolutely. I mean, those are great tips, Gail. Well, um, <laughs> those are all um, we can tell you've done high point a time or two. Oh, yeah. Um, just a few times. Yeah. And all those are, you know, in different, we find different people have sort of different things that they feel like is so important. Oh, I could definitely not do this if I don't do X, Y, and Z. Um, but uh, those things that you mentioned are, um, that's very valuable. You know, the private home piece, uh, staying in a house, um, especially if you're bringing a team, we found uh, to hear designers say that's very valuable because they come back together in the evenings in a more relaxed setting. Um, you know, many of our homeowners, you know, High Point was doing Airbnb before anybody knew what Airbnb was. We've been doing this for um, a lot of years. And so our homeowners here are very accustomed to um, getting a house ready for market. And so a lot of times they'll have the same renters time after time and uh, they just leave them a list. Here's the wine we like and here's fill the refrigerator full of this. And um, it's ready for you when you get there and you're really able to then connect with your team in the evenings and and um, relax and get your feet ready for the next day. <laughs> well, it's always fun. We're already planning for our next market. We'll, we'll yeah. of course, be there. So thank you so much for sharing your yeah. expertise today and congratulations on your promotion. And thank you. we look forward to all the things that you have to bring. Thanks, Gail. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. So, have you packed your second pair of shoes yet? We hope that Tammy has given you a better understanding of what makes this event tick. And if you've never attended High Point Market before, we hope to see you there in the fall or spring. We almost always have a speaking event or private tour, so stay up to date with our newsletter to get our schedule as soon as it becomes available. Stay tuned for the next episode of the podcast where we discuss project management. 